Hello there, welcome to this video on the Essentials Mastery. This video goes hand in hand with uh, an article I wrote, link screen description, and uh, I'm just going to give you in this video some technical exercises to highlight and demonstrate the content of that article for your benefit. Now the most common problem people have is uh, what to learn and when. So no matter what path you're taking, what I'm talking about in this video will apply to you. I usually break this down into three paths, each path being able to be broken down even further. But the main three areas are concert pianist, uh, what I would call a jazz pianist, and a composer. Now the composer, the world is just endless, you can do what you want in that, but you still have to, you still, you still can't escape the content of this video. Jazz, you can't escape the content of this video, whether you want to be a cruise ship entertainer or really play in a touring jazz band, improvising around, or if you want to become a concert pianist and play concerts in great halls of Rachmaninoff and Liszt and Beethoven, you can't escape what I'm talking about in this video, no matter your level. Many of the experts uh, forget this basic stuff, which is considered basic. You need to respect the foundations of music and never forget them. In the article I talk about beginner's mind, the idea that the expert's mind always thinks that there's not much more to learn, that everything's been done before. There's that sense of ego and almost self-righteousness in a way, which is tragic. And in a beginner's mind, uh, there are many possibilities. You think, well, like, there's so many things to do, so many things to keep learning and practice. It's important to maintain the beginner's mind, no matter your experience. So if you are actually a beginner with not a lot of experience, don't worry. Uh, I have some experience, and I still consider myself a beginner, and I always will. It's very important that you do the same, to remember these foundational ideas. Music is built from these things. Now, the basic sequence is this, which I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to tell you how that can help you, and I'm going to give you some examples. So we're going to dive right into it now. The chromatic scale is the f building block of our music, the Western music. So world music is based on other things, but let's talk about you know what 99% what of you are going to play 99% of the time. Your chromatic scale is what gives you the major scale. The major scales give you the major triads and the minor triads and every other chord that you will ever play. Those, thi and th those things you can then practice in many, many different ways. Many mental things and many, me many physical things. The mental things are things like patience, internal piano, uh, timing. Uh, and physical things can be, you can practice things like uh, d dexterity, hand independence, um, precision endurance, many things that I've uh, mentioned in the article which come to, come to my uh, mind. So just because they are considered basic, they're actually always available for you to practice and enhance your technique uh, physically and mentally both at and away from the piano, especially on the internal piano. So this video really does cover everything for anybody and any music that you'll ever play ever, no matter your level. So do really understand that. So again, everything comes from that, what I call 12 note block. That is, you can start on any note, let's just pick a F sharp, and if you count 12 notes, you're back to where you started. And that happens on any note. Because C, in music theory, doesn't have any sharps or flats, and it has white notes, which is a horrible word for me to hear, but for those of you who are beginners, I have to I have to bend to your un to your beginner understanding and your desire to play on the white notes. I'll call C the demonstration key because everyone's familiar with it. It's useless to play in E flat if you don't in A flat if you don't know A flat yet. So the idea is that the key of C, which I'll call the demonstration key, doesn't have any sharps or flats, and that's the twelve note block. C to B. And that's what you need to see excuse the pun, in your mind on your internal piano. If I were a guitarist, I'd be saying something else, but I'm sure there is something that you can do with the fretboard on a guitar as well. If anyone knows, then do comment. Of course, there are six strings, but I'm not, I'm not aware of any patterns on the guitar. I think the, f the frets have dots in them, though, sometimes. Perhaps a guitarist could confirm that. And then from that chromatic scale, which itself can be used for various exercises, we get the 
template for the major scale. The major scale means that you take, and the template means you start on any note, so let's start on D, and we follow the whole step, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and that gives you the D major scale. Your job is to master all 12 of those major scales before anything else. And there are many, many different ways that you can do that. I have a video on it. All the videos and articles I talk about are in the description below or on the screen, if you can see those. So the major scale of... Tw it doesn't mean play them really, really quickly with two hands, like list, in, in ridiculous speeds. It's not about that. It's about just, even with your little finger, being able to play, even slowly, every major scale. Let's jump up to uh, B flat. It's just about knowing where the notes are, seeing the scale with your eyes, and then your body will follow that. And uh, don't worry about fingering, because your fingers will naturally find their own way. There are better fingerings, which apply to most people, but everyone's hand is different. So, you have the chromatic, which gives you the major scales. From the major scales, there are two chords, which, are, which we can call primary chords, triads, because there are three notes, and to those two triads, major and minor, we add any other notes we want to create more complex chords. But no matter how complex that chord becomes, it's always a note or a number based on, for example in the key of C, the major scale. Now if you're playing regular music, you'll only ever go up to seven. If you're interested in jazz and you want the more complicated sounds, I'm not going to make this video too complicated, but regularly you'll play chords which are within the seventh within the major seventh. So you'll play sixths, dominant sevenths, major sevenths with the minor. There may be one or two others. But if you're if you're interested in the jazz route, then you have to use the nine, which is still a number from the major scale, eleven, which is still a number from the major sca scale, and thirteen, which is still a number from the major scale. So if you know your major scales, all the jazz stuff as complex as it can be, will become very easy, just because you know the major scales, and you'll have to put two of the 12 note blocks together to give you two octaves. But they're exactly the same thing, of course, you just put them together like Lego bricks. So the major triad is based on the 1, the 3, and the 5 of the major scale. The minor is when you drop the third. Try to create an emotional connection with every chord that you play. So a major scale is very happy and simple and a bit boring and a bit bland. It's like flour. It's just the flour and eggs. Very simple, you know. Minor, a little bit more sad. A bit more serious. And to those two triads, which you must master in all 12 keys, I'll give you a little example in a moment, uh, exercise, you add both the major seventh, which is the seventh of the major scale. I mean, I'm saying it, major seven. Seven of the major scale, which is a B in the key of C, and the dominant seven, you normally just say the number seven, seven, C seven, and it implies not major seven, but dominant seven, which is a flat major seven. And you want to master those chords in all 12 keys, I'll give you an exercise in a moment, and then the major seven and the dominant seven with the minor triad. C minor, major seven, and C minor, seven. C minor dominant 7, but you don't need to say dominant. So you've got your major and your minor triad, and then to those you add anything else that you want. The beginning one is 7, dominant 7, minor major 7, minor 7. Okay, so let's just give you an example of that, and to that you could add other notes, and uh, that's, that's beyond the scope of this video, but I of course have videos and s articles for that if you're interested, just ask, or we'll have a look in my video list. So, uh, first of all, let's have a look at the chromatic scale. And uh, one of the important things about the mind, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a mind, if I can, a mind and a physical example for each of the building blocks. And just to confirm again, the building blocks are chromatic scale, major scale, major minor triads, and then uh, with the seventh and with the major seventh added to both the major and the minor triads. So that's the structure. If you look at the article, it's in there, you can see it clearly. So let's just do something mental with the, uh, so to speak, with the chromatic scale. And let's do something physical with it as well. So let's just say patience with the chromatic scale. People like to play fast all the time and rush ahead. Don't need to do that. Just relax. 
and let's do um, something physical such as uh, endurance which is a physical thing your arms get tired because you haven't spent enough time doing physical exercises uh, something very recommended of course video and article on those now endurance using the chromatic scale a very good idea for this is to take any finger the weaker one is best for me my weakest finger is my left ring finger and on my right hand, I don't know, they're all pretty strong, but let's say thumb, which I don't really use as a note so much. So I'm taking my two weakest, so to speak, fingers, and I'm going to go for an endurance test. Maybe put the stop clock on and see if, to see how far we go, first of all. So let, I'm not going to do this because it might end up being 12 minutes, but I would just chromatically go up like this at a comfortable speed, eyes closed. I went up to B, the chromatic scale. And on this one, I'm just keeping a steady touch, steady speed. I'm not really counting how many times I go up and down because there would be a stop clock. And I will do this literally until my fingers cannot move anymore. Now that could be because I've got you know some experience of playing a lot a long time, but eventually my arms and fingers will just start to want to die. And then I'll stop the stopwatch when I can't go any further and it might be just for example I said 12 minutes earlier so let's just say it's 12 minutes great maybe relax do some sort of stretches and whatnot don't hurt yourself but do some stretches and maybe the next day do, do some other stuff blah, blah blah play around do some other exercises and then the next day or every other day do that same exercise and see if you can extend your endurance because endurance is very important many many pianists get very tight you can see if you watch the classical piano concerts you can see the sweat dripping from their faces um, because the I mean, they can just about survive to the end, but when they're playing some of these big, big pieces like Beethoven concertos and Liszt rhapsodies, uh, <laughs> they are they are sweating. Uh, so think about that. It, it really does happen. It's a very important uh, physical concept. And I also said patience. Um, well, that's a good thing. You could do that very slowly. I mean, this actually is a patience thing. I actually selected a physical and a mental one which go together quite well. Patience and physical. You may get really bored of this, but just get over it. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. Stop being impatient. Now let's just take uh, something with the major scales. Uh, so you, you must know all your 12 major scales. I have a video on enhancing the major scale and reinforcing it. So I'm going to take the major scale of, uh, well, I pick one F, with one B flat. Now let's do something physical such as uh, precision. So what I might do is close my eyes. And let's do something uh, mental which could be... I can't think of anything. Uh, hmm, what could I do for this one? Uh, internal piano, internalization. That could be quite useful. So, although I'm at the piano, I'm still closing my eyes. So, let's. So, there we are. Again, they go together quite well, actually. I'm having to activate my internal piano by closing my eyes. I'll go down here. And I'm going to do precision. And I'm going to use, just for example, the two index fingers. And I'm just going to do maybe. Tip, well, f for my example, I'll just do twice, but you might do 20 at a very comfortable speed. I have a video on uh, which, which I call Finding Your Natural Limit. It basically means play a, f a musical phrase or do a technical exercise at the naturalist, at the horrible word, at the most natural speed possible for you. And then throughout, rep through after repeating it enough times, it will become easier. And then increase the speed by 10 or 20 beats per minute and repeat it. This can happen over days and weeks. And eventually, and quicker than you imagine, you will be increasing the speed maybe from 100 beats per minute and you'll be able to do it at 160, 180 surprisingly quickly. Uh, I surprised myself when I realized that many years ago. So um, key of F, index fingers, precision, eyes closed, internal piano. So I close my eyes and um, the I can see the major scale of F in my mind. And now this is a, a case of precision. So what I might do to make it a bit more difficult to be precise is to go up and down each note as I go up, meaning F, G, A, F, G, A, G, A, B flat, A, B flat, C. You know, I'm going up like this. How would I do that going down? Like this. So that's forcing me to be precise using one finger. So I may do it with my middle finger this time and I'll change the key to B flat. Eyes closed. I confuse myself when I speak. So you may you may do that faster and faster and faster. I don't want to put the metronome on in demonstration. 
because it doesn't match because of the, um, the delay between the keyboard and the computer but just out of interest I'm just going to put the speed at uh, 120 2 beats per, per, per second and I'm going to do that B flat one just out of interest with my um, middle fingers uh, how do I do it? Um, <laughs> I like this. Then down. So I found that quite quickly, quite easy at 120. So I'm going to increase it to 130. This is what you will do with the eyes closed. So I found that particularly easy. So let me just jump up to maybe 150. So I found that quite easy. So I'm going to put, you know, I would push up the speed more and more and more. I could probably do that maybe 200 quite accurately. Of course, that's because I've done it for years. But the idea is that if you push it up in that way, you'll be surprised at your progress. So that's an example of mixing precision with the internal piano because I'm seeing that major scale of F on my internal piano so I don't miss a note. Uh, a nice sentence for you to remember is the fingers can do what the mind can imagine them doing and the fingers cannot do what the mind cannot imagine them doing away from the piano. So do uh, realize that a lot of your piano playing begins in the mind. Sense of rhythm comes from the mind. Timing from the mind. Patience from the mind. Internal piano from the mind. Only a few things come in from the body only and require physical practice, such as precision, endurance, dexterity. These things do require you to be at the piano, but a lot of actual piano playing itself, the musical side, does come from inside. Uh, so let's do something with the chords now. Um, you may have heard of the circle of fourths. Sometimes people don't uh, know what that is. It's not anything that you really do musically. It's something which just kind of exists and it's a very nice pattern that has been chosen by the, the songwriters of, uh, of, well, of now and yesteryear, where they simply go up in fourth, C up to F, F up to B flat, B flat up to E flat, etc. And it's quite a nice pattern to follow. You could also do it in the circle of fifths. You can even create your own and go up in thirds and major sevenths. You can go around how you want. But the circle of fourths and fifths, which is basically the same thing in opposite directions, meaning C up to G is a fifth, but C down to G is a fourth. So the opposite, C to, G, C to G is a fifth, G to C is a fourth. So they're kind of mirrors of each other. F to C is a fifth, but C to F is a fourth. So you're doing the circular fourths one way, circular fifths the other, but it's the same letters in order. And uh, one of them gives you, if you go up in the circular fourth, you get an extra flat. So C to F gives you another, gives you one flat. Go up from the F a fourth to B flat, you get two flats, which is B flat and E flat. Go up a fourth in B flat to E flat, you get three flats, which is E flat, A flat, and B flat. And you go up a fourth in E flat to A flat, you get four flats, etc. And if you go up in the fifths, around the circle of fifths, you get sharps. C is nothing, G is one sharp, which is the F. Up a fifth to D, that gives you two sharps, which is the F sharp and the C sharp. Go up a fifth in D to A, and you get three sharps, A to E, four sharps, etc. So circular fifths gives you sharps, circular fourths gives you flats. Now you can use that for your chords. Uh, so let's just do something like um, dexterity without the pedal doing the major triads maybe do four of major four minor upper fourth to F minor B flat minor etc etc and then you may do that with the major sevenths but you may do it just maybe twice um, so let's do it in the circle of fifths using major sevenths but only twice this time G D A E B so because I know these shapes so well because I know the major scales, it's very easy to jump between them with almost, at, without almost any hesitation. Do that yourself by lowering the speed, finding your natural limit and pushing it. Even if it's a really slow thing like this. Down to G. 
Just keep doing it and you'll get it. Up to D. And you'll get it. So that's a nice um, little idea to do there. Um, the, the main point of this video really was not to give, was not for me to just show what I can do, but to give you the freedom and the awareness of the fact that you can do so many things with the chromatic scale from that, the major scale, all 12, from that, the major and minor triad, all 12, well, all 24, and then um, with the major seventh and the dominant seventh. And from that, you can practice so many other things. You don't need to you know, buy all these exercise books and all that, because you can create your own. Uh, another one I used to do uh, for a very long time was to play the chromatic scale with two fingers, for example, like this, C to C sharp, and then, then, and then repeat that pattern. But using all finger combinations on both hands. So I might do it with my left hand, and middle finger and index finger. Something like this, and of course going down. Um, you could do that in major scale. It's also very interesting using the major scales because each major scale has, an, has a spacing difference. The intervals are the same, but physically the spacing is different. So for example, the, the fingering for, uh, you, you could just practice the first five notes, just use five fingers in order, one, two, three, four, five, or three, two, one, the first five notes of the key of B, for example. The first and the second note is a white note to a black note. Whereas if I do it in the key of D, it's a white note to a white note. So you're having a different kind of workout there. D to E and B to C sharp. It's a different workout. Your hand needs to be in a slightly different lo location, position. Um, so that can give you some extra benefits. If I do it in E flat, you're going black to white. D flat is going black to black. So all the major scales give you different shapes, of course, in both fingers. And it's a good idea to practice different finger combinations throughout the major scales. Now, to conclude this video, this doesn't mean that you need to become a major scale triad major seventh expert and be able to play everything in all 12 keys at great speed with your eyes shut in every time signature possible. It doesn't mean that. The point is that just be aware that whatever you need to achieve in your own musical path, on your own musical path, whether it's composing and you want to work out that you can hear a melody in your head. For example, for me, I liked, I heard this idea of doing octaves but pressing it first, like, it, it sounds like list actually, but I heard it in a composition once, and I would just simply go like this. So I did exactly what I'm telling you, you should be doing. Find my natural limit, which was quite slow, and then just slowly, I, I got better and more precise with my eyes closed. And I did that in different keys, of course. And then I would go chromatically up, up to D, E flat. That's the idea. And it just became very natural for me. It, within days, I was uh, quite amazed. So even if you're a composer, if you're a concert pianist, or if you're doing jazz, if you just need to focus on particular components of that, know that you can come back to the chromatics, the chromatic, the major scales, and the major and minor triads, with sevenths or not, and you can be practicing spacing of fingers, timing, precision, internal piano, endurance, all these things, just from those things that many expert pianists with a lot of experience consider not important because they think they're beyond that. So again, as I said at the beginning, beginner's mind. Maintain your beginner's mind and never underestimate the importance and the significance of the content of this video and the related article because you can really uh, enhance your playing no matter what path you're on if you just come back to these sometimes and move away from the piece or move away from the technical difficulty that you're experiencing come back to these play around with them and just respect them give them the respect that they deserve um, I think I can just about finish with those nice words so thank you very much for watching likes comments subscriptions always welcome uh, have a look at my books and my blog and uh, see you in the next video all the best and bye for now